Hello everyone. Ever wondered how you could turn your everyday lamination machine into something extraordinary? Well, we got something exciting to share our DIY project that transforms a regular lamination machine into a homemade PCB toner transfer wonder. This special edition machine comes with NodeMCU technology, making PCB making at home a breeze. What's cool about it? The machine can automatically adjust the forward and backward direction itself, based on your PCB size and simplified workflow. Just imagine, easy and perfect PCB lamination every single time. It's not just a machine, it's your new best friend for effortless PCB designs. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm excited to show you how to convert a photo laminator machine into the perfect homemade PCB toner transfer machine using NodeMCU. This conversion helps to transfer the toner onto the PCB without losing any copper traces. So, let's explore this project. If you don't know what PCB toner transfer is, I will be explain it after we explore into the project. PCB toner transfer is one of the essential processes in homemade PCB fabrication. The common procedure for making homemade PCBs involves designing a schematic. Afterward, the designed schematic is printed onto photo paper using a laser printer. Then, the printed schematic paper is applied to the copper clad board. Then heat is applied using an iron box to transfer the toner onto the copper clad PCB. This normal procedure is known as the toner transfer method. However, using an iron box for heat transfer has several potential problems, such as incomplete transfer or gaps in traces, toner melting or blurring due to overheating, uneven pressure causing inconsistent transfer, toner lifting or displacement during ironing, and misalignment due to paper shifting. Most of these problems are commonly encountered when using an iron box for toner transfer to the copper clad PCB. To address all these potential problems, I am going to use this photo laminator machine to create a perfect PCB toner transfer machine. Using a photo laminator machine for PCB toner transfer offers numerous benefits, including consistent heat and pressure, reduced stain, precise temperature control, enhanced adhesion, improved transfer accuracy, faster transfer times, and professional quality results. The photo laminator I used for my PCB toner transfer purpose is the VMS Deluxe Thermal Laminator. Its front control panel features an on-off switch, a direction-changing switch, and a temperature control potentiometer. Another important feature is the jam release function. This function is used to release the pressure rollers manually if the power to the laminator is suddenly lost during the PCB toner transfer process, preventing the PCB from getting trapped inside. It's important to use this function carefully to avoid potential harm or damage to the machine. I purchased this photo laminator at a local shop near me. The same model is available on Amazon as well. Online, they offer it for 3,399 rupees, but I was able to purchase the exact same photo laminator from a local shop for only 2,600 rupees. So, before you make a purchase, I recommend verifying the price at your local shop first. One more thing to clarify, if you're planning to buy the photo laminator for PCB toner transfer purposes, you must purchase this exact model. There are many lower priced photo laminators available, but they are not suitable for our PCB toner transfer purposes. To use a laminator machine for PCB toner transfer, you need two specific features. The first is adjustable temperature control, and the second is the ability to control the roller's front and back direction. Lower-priced laminators do not typically include these two essential features. Now, it's time to convert the laminator into a PCB toner transfer laminator. This conversion involves two steps. The first step is disabling the temperature sensor, and the second step is adding the NodeMCU to the laminator. I will explain later why we include the NodeMCU in the laminator. First, let's disassemble the laminator. To do this, I removed all the screws, including the front panel screws. Now, 
Now, let's take a look at the hardware inside. The roller is used for even pressure distribution, ensuring that the rollers apply consistent pressure across the surface of the PCB. There are two heating coils placed on the rollers, one on the upper side and one on the lower side. Additionally, there is a heat sensor placed near one of the rollers, which monitors the real-time temperature and cuts off the relay when necessary. Finally, there is the control circuit, which includes only a few components. The relay is responsible for controlling the heating coils, turning them on and off depending on the temperature. This is the complete hardware setup of the laminator machine. Now, it's time to begin updating this laminator for use as our PCB toner transfer machine. The first step is to simply disconnect the temperature sensor's connection from the control circuit. The reason for disconnecting the temperature sensor is that, if you use the PCB toner transfer without disconnecting the temperature sensor, once the set temperature is reached, the relay will cut off the heat. This would prevent the toner transfer from working properly because the toner transfer process requires a fixed temperature to be applied to the copper-clad board and the printed schematic paper. To resolve this issue, we simply disconnect the temperature sensor. The next modification involves including the node MCU. This modification is intended to allow the laminator machine to automatically control its front and back direction based on the size of the PCB. Normally, we manually control the direction switch to change between forward and backward directions. However, this manual process can be time-consuming and challenging to achieve a perfect toner transfer every time. To address this issue, we're integrating the Node MCU, which includes an SD card module as well. Let me clarify how the automated direction control in the laminator machine works with the help of the Node MCU. We have the Node MCU direction controller, which includes an SD card module and a relay switch, and we also have the laminator. The Node MCU's relay is connected to the laminator's manual direction changing switch as follows. The relay common pin is connected to the manual switch's center terminal. The relay normally open pin is connected to the manual switch's first terminal. Finally, the relay normally closed pin is connected to the manual switch's third terminal. This configuration establishes the entire connection between the Node MCU and the laminator. Now, here's the concept. The Node MCU will trigger the relay to turn on and off. When the relay is triggered, the laminator will change its direction. Essentially, we're replacing the manual effort required to control the direction with automated control using the Node MCU. Let's explore the electronic hardware components used in this project. Node MCU. This is the main hardware component. It can also be used as an Arduino. In the future, I plan to modify this project to be fully Wi-Fi controlled, where an app will allow you to measure the PCB time duration and send it to the Node MCU for direction control without the need for an SD card. But I will only make this version after this video reaches 10k views. SD Card Module. This module is based on a logic level shifter. It allows for safe and easy communication between the Node MCU and the SD card without damaging the SD card. Power Supply I used a 12V 2A-amp power supply, which is a suitable choice for this project. SD Card I chosen to use a 4GB SD card for this project, but a 1GB SD card can also be used. I installed all components onto the PCB. After completing all the hardware setup, I placed everything into this plastic enclosure. On the controller's front panel, there is a power on off switch, two LED to indicate the laminator's rotation direction, a mode switch used for manual direction control and automatic direction control, and finally, the SD card slot. Everything is now set up, and it's time to test. First, I need to measure the time duration and save it to the SD card. To do this, I switch the mode to the manual direction mode. In this mode, I can control the laminator's direction manually using a switch. I position the laminator roller to move forward and start measuring time using the stopwatch on my smartphone. Simultaneously, I feed the copper clad into the laminator, 
and as I slowly move the laminator inside, I start the timer. Once the PCB has fully entered the laminator and is outside on the other end, I stop the stopwatch. The time it took for the PCB to fully enter the laminator was only 22 seconds. Our timer measurement is complete. Now, I need to store this data on the SD card. To do this, I connect the SD card to my PC and format it. Then, I simply open the Notepad app and enter the previously recorded stopwatch time, which is 22 seconds. I convert this time to milliseconds, both the high and low values. After that, I save the data onto the SD card with the file name, config.txt. This name is essential for the Node MCU to identify the file. I choose the encoding format as ANSI and save it. Our data storage process is now complete. I can simply remove the SD card from the PC and connect it to the Node MCU. Now, I'm ready to transfer the schematic onto my PCB. To begin, we need to create the PCB schematic. I've already designed the PCB using the popular online PCB design service called EasyEDA. Here's the PCB layout with the grid disabled to provide a clear view. And I've switched to the bottom layer. This is our PCB. Now, let's switch to the 2D view to see the component's footprints on the top layer. We won't be transferring this top layer to our PCB, we'll only be using the bottom layer. Lastly, take a look at the 3D view. This is an Arduino-based bipolar stepper motor driver. On the bottom layer, I've created a ground plane using a method known as copper pores. Copper pores help improve electrical performance reduce electromagnetic interference, and most importantly, reduce the usage of ferric chloride. This concludes the overview of the PCB. Now, let's export it and print it out. I insert the PCB into the laminator and power on the Node MCU controller. The process begins. And you can observe that the laminator perfectly controls its direction depending on the size of the PCB. After completing the toner transfer, let's examine the results. The quality of the toner transfer is excellent. This ensures that no traces will be lost during the process, and all the bottom layer components will be perfectly transferred to the PCB, resulting in a reliable and high-quality printed circuit board. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below or contact me in WhatsApp. My WhatsApp number is provided in the video description. Please note that I can only respond to messages, not calls. I am ready to reply anytime. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more exciting projects like this. Stay tuned for our next video, and until then, happy building!